Our scripture reading is from the book of Matthew, verses 36 through 39. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him and began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. The word of God for the people of God. My dear sisters and brothers, these are difficult and challenging times for the Church. And since we cannot be physically together, we will have communion spiritually together. Please, wherever you are in your home, please find a piece of bread, some crackers, some juice, water will be fine and we will bless those elements so you can use them to have communion tonight. The night when Jesus ate his last supper with the disciples, he took bread. And broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. After the meal, he took the cup and he asked God's blessings on the cup. And he shared it with his disciples and he said, take and eat all of you. This is my blood shed for you. Do this always in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of Jesus' holy and last supper with the disciples, we all partake of these elements. Do that now. Christ and the blood of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. And now, dear God, we simply ask that you be with us in this difficult time. As you were with your son Jesus in his difficult time, we ask that you deliver us from this coronavirus situation, with this pandemic. We ask that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
My dear sisters and brothers, I would like to speak today about hope in the midst of crisis. Tonight is a night when we remember the Last Supper of Jesus with his disciples, the time that he instituted this sacred sacrament that we now call Holy Communion. It was the conclusion of a ministry of servanthood. Jesus came down from heaven, not claiming to be a king, which he could, not claiming to be served by others, which, which he also could, but as a humble servant of God and humanity to make possible a new way of relating to God, an effective way to become justified in the presence of God and thus be saved from our sins. So he ate and drank the Passover celebration with the disciples and recommended that we, as people of God, continue the tradition until he returns. That is what we celebrate tonight in this day of the Holy Week that we call Monday Thursday. But tonight, I would like to take you beyond that iconic moment to the events that happened after that last meal with his disciples. The scripture reading in Matthew tells us that Jesus and the disciples left the upper room where they were eating and went to the Mount of Olives. Once they reached the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus commanded the disciples to stay and be watchful, and then took three of them, Peter, James, and John, even a little bit further. He also left them behind while he went a few steps even further to pray. Jesus had been for the last uh, few days afraid that he may lose his life because there were very powerful enemies trying to kill him. His prayer, <clears throat> his prayer to the Father was, my Father, if be possible, let this cup pass from me. Jesus was asking the Father to spare him the very painful death that awaited him on the cross, which was a necessary step for the work of redemption to be completed. But did you notice, in his most difficult moment, Jesus took time to pray to the Father. Is there a lesson for us there? We, as humankind, like Jesus in his time, are facing a very dangerous enemy. And this enemy today comes in the form of a virus that has been baptized COVID-19 or coronavirus. This is by far the most difficult moment that we face 
or have faith in our lifetime. Would not be appropriate then for us to also set aside some time to go to God in prayer like Jesus did. Maybe our prayer, like the one of Jesus in Gethsemane, could very well be, Father, let this cup pass from us. You know, as we speak, more than a million people have been infected by the virus already. 40,000 people have already died of this disease. And they tell us that the worst is still to come. So maybe we collectively need to pray to the Father, let this cup pass from us. The God that we believe in is a God of life. It is a God of order. It is a God of hope. It is a God of love. So I invite you to make yours this prayer that comes to us from theologian Jerome Sahabandu. It says, God of life, you have created order out of chaos, new life out of many crises. In this crisis of coronavirus too, we know that you are with us in our situation, in our craziness, in the pandemic and trauma that we are going through. You are with all of humanity and especially with all of those who struggle in this crisis. We know you in a mysterious way. You know, we know that you will transform everything into good. And after coronavirus, we shall never be the same. Dear God, help us to cling onto that hope. You are the God of life. Amen.